Alright you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be looking at a guy by the name of John Randall. Now I've heard this name, it sounds legendary, I don't know why. It's probably because of the fact that I've heard it thousands of times, but one man has, um, has recommended John Randall over and above everyone else. And this guy is a guy that I respect, it's a guy that I had my first ever podcast with. I don't know if you've seen that episode, but um, his name's Al. And he's a huge Patriots fan, so I'm not sure if John Randall's going to be from the Patriots, but I would assume he is. Um, but yeah, he said, look, if nothing else, please, please, can you react to John Randall? I assume the story is going to be great, I don't know why, I don't know how old he is, I don't know what position he played, but that's, about, that's what we're about to find out. So let's do that. Let's do that, guys. All right, let's go. John Randall, NFL Films, the craziest man in NFL history. Oh man, a football life. All right, guys, we're not going to do any research. I don't think I need to. This video is going to be long enough. It's 20 minutes long, but I have been recommended this exact video, and I cannot wait to watch it. The craziest man in NFL history. Should I should I look at a couple of his stats? Should I? Um, Right, I'll just look at what his career was like. What, what? Oh, John Randall, defensive tackle, DT. On February 6th, he was voted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Born in Mumford, Texas, Ray Randall was raised poor and worked odd jobs when he was young. His brother Irvin Randall played as a linebacker for eight years. Randall played high school football in Texas. He started his college playing career at Trinity Valley Community College before transferring to Texas A&M University. He went undrafted. He tried out for his brother, brother's team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but was thought to be too small and was not signed to a contract. The six foot one, 241 pound defensive lineman was picked up by the Vikings after the draft, after the draft on the recommendation of head scout Don Deesh. Playing his first season in 1990, he went to his first Pro Bowl in 93 and quickly became one of the most dominant defensive tackles of his era. So he ended up going to the Pro Bowl seven times. He played 14 seasons. And it looks as if he pretty much never missed a game. And he got a whole heap of sacks. <laughs> he was blitzing. All right, guys, let's have a look. From humble beginnings to the most craziest man in football history, there's got to be a reason. There's got to be. is a classic rags to riches story. Rising from abject poverty to become the highest paid defensive player in history. Look at that! Let's down here get out of your mother man! He was undrafted, yet recorded Ooh. more sacks than any defensive tackle ever has. Those side steps to get past those um, offensive linemen were just about as good as what I've seen in the backfield. That's insane. That's some good movement. We're talking about a little guy just annihilating a big man. He played with an intense ferocity. I'm here. I'm ready to rock. Yet never met a man he didn't like. Come kiss me, man. <laughs> man, you should hang out. We should go fishing together. He would recite the Gettysburg Address. Oh, I scored seven years ago, brother! Yet deprive opponents of life and liberty in his pursuit of quarterbacks. <laughs> he had 140 sacks in his career, for fuck's sake. Was he crazy? I kicked your whole family's ass! A madman. <laughs> or a psychological genius. He just throws away the block. They're going to have to open up another can of quarterbacks if this keeps going on. John Randall has lived the American dream. His journey to the NFL began in the small town of Mumford, Texas, in a 20 by 20 foot shack. It started out so strange, in a little small, small town, in the middle of nowhere, three black kids and a mom, dirt poor. My mom, she worked as maid 
She was making like $23 a week. We didn't have any indoor running water. We didn't have an indoor bathroom. We had to go outside to the outhouse. The single seat. And uh, I know some people had, had a double whole outhouse. And that, that's, that's big time. <laughs> I first went when we were dating. I had heard some stories he had shared with me. He some details, but he never just spoke a lot about it. Seeing it was really a shocker for me. It was... That's where the craziest man in football was brought up. We're living that way. That's what I felt. Ugh. It was a happy house, but it was a cold house. A lot of times we'd have to take some of the cover off the bed and change the doors and stay warm. It would be so cold in there, we'd have to light the dead stove. We had to warm the water on top of the stove so we could have hot water in and take a bath. His father, Edward Wilson, wasn't around much. My dad wasn't close to us. He wasn't a guy that was, was there. He didn't spend time with us. It's a cool setting. The first thing I thought when I saw that was, fuck, that's a cool setting to have him like talking just on a random seat in his childhood bedroom, what it looks like. It's really cool, man. Like, the producers and the directors of NFL films and NFL channel and all of the NFL stuff, man, it's fucking top notch, eh? I really enjoy it. It's fantastic, man. The man who showed Randall there was a life outside Mumford was his older brother, Irvin. I don't know how you explain when you dream things that you, you don't know what they are. You just know you see visions of a better life. Telling my mom that I want to be a pro football player was my idea of listening to a Sunday afternoon NFL game, hearing them say, I've taken care of my mom and my family. We used to watch the Dallas Cowboy. He used to tell me all the time, Mom, you know what? I said, well, he said, I'm going to be like that one of these days. He comes home and he got some girls in the car with him. And I'm like, why are these girls with you? He goes, because they like the way I play football. Irvin earned a scholarship at Baylor University, was drafted by Tampa Bay, and started at linebacker for the Buccaneers. Successful as his older brother was, John Randall had no aspirations of leaving Mumford. I used to see these garbage men working. Work for the city, got city benefits. That's gonna be my job. I'm gonna be a garbage man. Start working by six, be done by noon. Drink some cold beer. I got made in shade. Not bad. Before his senior year at Hearn High School, Randall left the football team. I'd always call back and check on that bike. I called and mom says he's gonna quit football. I was having to hitch a ride from practice every day. That's 11 miles from Hearn back to Mumford. You can't just walk that 11 miles back home. He said, I'm not going back to school tomorrow. I said, why? He said, you know that coach made me get out there and just work? I said, I want you to go back out there tomorrow and get on that football field. If you don't play ball, I'm coming to Hearn with me a belt. And I'm whoop you for everybody out there. He went back out there and stopped playing ball. Spurred on by his mother, Randall played well enough to earn a college scholarship oh, at that's Texas awesome. A&I Kingsville. I needed a uh, push from my mom leaving Mumford. Now all of a sudden going to college, going out there and trying it, it's America's dream. You got it, buddy. John Randall never heard his name called at the NFL draft. Wow. John wasn't drafted because of his size. And you just didn't know where he was going to play. People think prototype defensive linemen, 6'3", 6'4", 290, 300 pounds. Even though he weighed just 245 pounds, Randall's older brother just? landed him a trip. Really? Just 245 pounds? I mean, you saw the, guy, the way that this guy moved, right? He swatted them away. He's got size. His arms are fucking like 20 inches. He's not small try out with the Buccaneers. I want him to play with me. I wonder what, I wonder what he, he ran a, um, I wonder what his 40 was. Should we look at, should we even look at that? Is it disrespectful to look at that? Probably is, man. No one cares about his 40, <laughs> except for me. I got worried 
point that they were trying to make him a linebacker. He was a defensive end. And I said, Tony, you got about six weeks to perfect your traits. If they try to move you from defensive end to linebacker, it's not enough time to learn it. So you're not going to be that good. And then they're going to cut you. Rando followed his brother's advice and refused to switch positions. He was cut by the Bucks. All right, coach, second team, second team. The same thing happened in Atlanta with Jerry Glanville's Falcons. Even the Minnesota Vikings, who have the smallest defensive line in football, considered him too small. What? Lloyd Peters, defense coordinator, talks like an army sergeant. He goes, you come back in about a month. Can you get 250? I'll give you a shot. What? I come back. It's all about the weight, really? Is that much importance focused on, like, what the fucking number says? Jeez, man. I'm just... Wait, and you know what, guys? I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be straight up honest with you, man. Straight up. Okay? I keep looking back at this camera because I keep looking at myself. I keep looking at my physique in this, in this light, and I'm thinking... These guys watching this video are gonna think, I am fucking skinny. They're gonna think... I, I'm thinking, should I stop this right now? Take off my top, put on a jumper, and come back and, and restart it. That's what I'm thinking, because I'm so self-conscious of the way I look right now. Or my weight being so low. And to hear things like this in football, man, you know what? It doesn't piss me off. It just makes me want to put on the weight that I need to be a solid running back. Because I, I, I'm not a solid running back right now. I'm fucking 6'1", 200 pounds, but quite lean. So I could put 10 kilos on, get up to 220, be 15, 18% body fat, I might lose a, a yard of pace, but it'll be a lot heavier. Yeah. But what I don't want to do, or what I can't do, is lose that yard of pace. I need to keep all of my pace and put the weight up. So yeah, that's just a personal little journey that I'm on at the moment. Ah, fucking small. Back in Minnesota for another mini camp. I'm like 244, 245, so I go to one of these hardware stores. <laughs> I see this big old chain and I see a little padlock. Next morning, go to the practice facility, I hop on the scale, I take this chain, wrap around my waist, put the padlock on, put my sweats over top, and walk Floyd Peters. What's his weight? Ah! 251. He goes, okay. Fucking hell. We'll give you a shot. That's amazing. That's how I did it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's how, that's how I should do it. Oh, that's fantastic. Randall made the Vikings roster. He wasn't a very big guy. Wherever you put him, he showed up. Kick off, punt return. Deion Sanders, one of the best return men in the NFL. And Sanders with no lane to go to. He's a dog fight! Came out of win! He had been a backup. He is built, man. Look at his arms. Nothing special, nothing that would say Hall of Famer. Denny Green said, we just traded Keith Millard to Seattle. We're going to move Johnny Randall into under tackle. This guy should play inside. He came to me and said, I want to be a really good player. Will you help me become a, a really, really good, good player? player? You could have knocked me over with a feather. <laughs> His exact words were, I want to have nice stuff. And my mom told me, to get nice stuff, you're going to have to work. Really get out. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm feel. I'm feel. There he is. Come on. Come on. That's it. Motor, motor, motor. There you go. I said, Johnny, get her that bag. Yeah, this ain't working, huh, John? It ain't working. It's easy money. Mr. Miyagi. Go. John Turley taught me how to go from a That's so life. cool seeing that guy as a young, younger coach and seeing him now, like just the, putting something like this together, man, with such history, having footage that old, the NFL is just fucking fantastic when it comes to production, man, and media. I just love it. Daniel was by far our start offensive line. 
Johnny only wants Russ to run him like that. Stay with us, stay with corner, corner. He couldn't beat Randall McDaniel. You got the quarterback yesterday? Randall McDaniel would just grab him and laugh. Might have taken him two years till he could beat Randall McDaniel. Stay with us, stay with us, stay with us. All right. And once he beat him, he arrived. Huh. Oh, McDaniels, eh? Randall's picture is next to the word chaos in the dictionary. Guess who again? John Randall. It was McDaniels who fired him up. Don't say any moves now. They really can't kill you, John Randall. For the first time, all the disadvantages in his life had given John Randall a leg up. They feed us? Yes. And we can pay for this? Yes. Back home, I would be out chopping cotton for two dollars an hour. With a hoe, walking down these fields, and we're doing this compared to that? Oh, this is easy. This is easy. <laughs> the NFL, yeah, you're playing against a bunch of guys who are crazy. Most of the guys, though, are pretending to be crazy. Now, Johnny, you didn't leave the game playing against him thinking, is this guy pretending? Red Rover, Red Rover, let the mother come on over. If you didn't know it, <laughs> and you just watched him or heard him play, you'd swear this guy's nuts. <laughs> He'll knock you down, but he'll get up and shake your hand. You had to listen to him psychologically talking you down, telling you he's you know, going to sack you and he's going to do his WWE walk over the top of you. John Randall, I'm sure had something to say to Russ. You can't help me, boy! I ain't no fan of Stone Field. Come on, wait to be a man. Bust the way to Mm, nice take. Let's take book out here. He created a monster that was like the blob. It just slowly took over. <laughs> Lord Humongous! Lord Humongous! Rule out the wasteland! Believe it or not, he was not crazy. There was a method to the madness. I thought so. I had a, I had an inkling. Over, right? Let's go. Come on, Stevie! Come on, Stevie! His pregame routine. Come on, Stevie! You, you ain't doing shit by yourself. I'll kick your ass by yourself. You do it. You do it. I'll kick your whole family's ass. You can say, hey, Frankie, how's the lead in Aubrey and Alexa doing? Five, he's in trouble. It was just a single rush, and he outquit Frank Winters. And we come back to the huddle, and Frank's like, how's he know my wife and two girls? I don't know, Frank. <laughs> you know, he studied the bios of every guy, and he wanted to get into their head. Frank Mitchell Winters, his wife named Linda. Shit, man. His couple has two daughters, Aubrey and Alexa. Set your eyes there. Put a sign. Put a sign. Sign on the lights. Once the kids were old enough, we'd show them the videos. They were, I don't, mostly horrified, I'd say. <laughs> I made a Honda. Can we rock How old are his kids, I wonder? We 65, 66, on that holders. Okay. I sure appreciate you. Got it. You got it. Right, if you're you. an official, everybody hates you. And this guy's coming up talking to you. What's the deal? You can play and cordial. I'm going to speak to like cordial. You're such a slow guy. I'm going to put you down on my all the talk and the finger pointing. He's good, man. For thought that John was good. Then trying to be dirty, just went off and went ballistic. Well, for runs into his own man, gets out of trouble and just throws it. Get him. He would mess with Trent. Hey, Trent, not focused on throwing the ball. He's just, he's just all thrown off. And Dilfer goes after John Randall at the bottom of the pile. Hurt me. <laughs> Doesn't look like there was anything even close to illegal. He just got him down around the knees. I didn't see anything that wasn't humane. Trent wanted to fight. 
Trent was so mad that he actually thought that he had a chance. <laughs> He's gone. They kicked him out. Wow. Trent Dilfer has been thrown out of the game. <laughs> well, that worked. That was the first. The quarterback gets thrown out and gets a 15-yard roughing the tackler penalty. Uh, but that's it never, that never happened, surely. John Randall was no longer Minnesota's undersized secret. In the Viking scheme, a cocked nose tackle lined up in the A-gap to engage both the guard and center. This usually gave Randall a one-on-one -on -one against the other offensive guard. Advantage, Vikings. And you beat an office lineman. Get him, Randall. Sacks better than sex. That feel like your, your success is forever. My first move was always a bull rush move. The bull rush sets everything up. What is it? As soon as they Woo. Can use the strength. That's when you start coming with the moves. He would do the moves all the time. That's what I'm saying. Oh, uh, that's so good. Push him over straight up. Then when they're really trying to set themselves, trying to fucking stop you from pushing, just get around them the outside if you've got that movement, which he does. Ah, that's strategy for you. That's fantastic. Nice work, John. In the chow hall, he'd work moves co coming into the meeting room, work moves on the door. So this was not just a game day deal, this was a way of life. Spin move was, was uh, perfected from watching Michael Jordan. <laughs> the spin is a tornado, gaining ground, tearing up trailer parks, churches, schools. Finally, John's signature move. Chavolet. Matador. Imagine being hit like that's like a punch, man. Fuck you hell. His arms are flying. It's hard when the guy's got a motor like that, whether he's talking himself into it or talking to get himself into it. He had a full steam ahead going just about every play. He pulled me on a bull rush. Nobody ever bull rushed me. Straight over. See ya. <laughs> so what? He gives a little shimmy, a little move to get him on his on his toes, and then pushes him back. I don't know. Is that right? One particular opponent. Two hits. There you go. Inspired greatness. John Randall sacked Brett Favre more times than any player ever. Get him! During the 1990s, John Randall recorded eight consecutive double-digit sack seasons. Fuck, the man. decade's highest total. That's insane. In 97, Randall became the first interior lineman ever to lead the league in sacks. Following that season, the Vikings made him the highest-paid defensive player in history. The country kid who aspired to be a garbage man now had his sights set on a Super Bowl. Does he get it? In 1998, John Randall was hungry to win a championship. And so were the Minnesota Vikings. Wants it deep. Got Moss down there. There's Moss. Moss. Talking about a team that went 15 and 1, scored more points than any team in the history of the National Football League. In the divisional round of the playoffs, the Vikings were routing the Arizona Cardinals. Cunningham cocks and fires. Touchdown! Don't tell me they lose it. Last play of the game, uh, me playing, I think, uh, right in or left in, and me thinking, don't want to get hurt, so I just take like two steps up the field, quarterback rolling my way, and I look up from inside, and here comes Derek Alexander over the top and oh. falling in my knee, hyperextending my knee. 
That's what I remember from that game. The following week, John Rando played the biggest game of his life on one good leg. Fuck, are you serious? Are you serious? Here goes the field goal try by Mort Anderson. The kick, why? No, it's good. I've literally seen John emotional less than a handful of times in my life, and that was one of them. John Randall played five more seasons. He retired with 137 and one half career sacks, tied for ninth all time. He spent his final three seasons in Seattle, helping Mike Holmgren's Seahawks make the playoffs. It's recovered by John Randall. Touchdown, Randall. In final irony. He played very little in his last NFL game, a playoff loss to Brett Favre and the Packers. Not long thereafter, Martha Randall's youngest son retired from pro football. Ladies and gentlemen, John Tierling presenting John Randall. First of all, I didn't think a free agent could get in the hall. And, uh, <laughs> but being in the hall, it all goes back to this. And also, like, think there's got to be a fair few players in the Hall of Fame now. Do they induct like five or six every single year? I want to go and see it. I want to go and see the Hall of Fame. My mom was no longer here. But she was the woman who raised three boys by herself. Sorry, guys. Very little money. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This. And also, like, think my mom was no longer here. But she was the woman oh. who raised three boys by herself with very little money. Thank you, Mom. I love you. <laughs> What's Terrell Owens? Over the course of my career in the National Football League, some of my actions have drawn a lot of attention. <laughs> Terrell Owens, get your popcorn ready. I reckon that one sounds pretty good. <laughs> All right, guys. Jeez, that was my first look at John Randall. Um, yeah, what do you want to say? He's <laughs> what an awesome story. He's um, went from zero to hero, but it took him a few years. So never give up, guys. That's, that's the message I, I take from this, man. Doesn't matter what your brother did. Doesn't matter what your, your upbringing was like. It's going to be on you. It's going to be on you. Dreaming big, believing in yourself, and achieving. But nothing, come, nothing happens overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. And John Randall didn't hit his stride until three, four years into his career. So, apparently. So with that said, I want to say, Al, from over there in the States, I want to say, hopefully, I've done John Randall justice. I want to say to everyone else who, who, who's watched this video, thank you. And if you have liked this video, as always, please press like. If you do want to subscribe and see more, please subscribe. And I'll be seeing you guys back here for another one very soon. Peace out.